afternoon, guys. Hope you're well. Same process ever. Max on either side. We'll set an embargo partway through for 10.30 this evening. Start with Fraser in the middle. Hello, Pep. You OK? Uh, can you bring us up to date with uh, injury issues to start with, particularly around uh, Foden, Kovacic and Rodri, please? Uh, Rodri is much better. Kovacic Kova, Kova as well. And Phil still doesn't feel uh, good. Uh, uh, the rest are OK. Obviously, it's transfer deadline day, but arguably one of the best bits of business you've maybe done is to bring Ilkay Gundogan back in. We saw what sort of an influence he had against Ipswich. How do you make in terms of how he's settling back in and, and how much of an influence is he having on the squad as a whole? He needs one minute. No more than that to settle. And in terms of his influence on the squad? Everybody knows it. He's a good player, top-class player, and... He knows the, me the mechanics, the, what we try to do, what we try to live all together, and so we knew it and it happened. And in terms of this weekend, it's early days for Hulan Lopetegui in charge of, of West Ham, but how do you see them evolving as a side? Are they a different prospect this year around? You new managers, new places always in time. Uh, an experienced manager, so been in Real Madrid and or national team from Spain and alongside another club, so Sevilla is a so demanding place, so having a lot of experience, is a, an unbelievable person and uh, yeah, so West Ham at what I already had, a good, good, really, really good squad and this transfer this summer bring new, new top players and and especially up front, physicality, especially up front, they have uh, an incredible weapon. It's a really strong team. Yeah. I, but I have to ask, although I think I know the answer, you, you're expecting a very quiet deadline day? Yeah. I thought so. Um, what's more of a priority for you at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, preparing for West Ham or Oasis tickets? <laughs> Absolutely West Ham. Will you be in the queue? Uh, Oasis? Uh, I don't know if we, yeah, if we can go, we go, absolutely. So it's a good news, I think, for the world music. So they are back, so it's fantastic for the thousand million fans they have around the world, especially here in England and UK. So, yeah, really good. Um, the Ballon d'Or voting opens next week. There's plenty of Manchester City players that perhaps will be expected to be in the shortlist, but of all outstanding players, perhaps Rodri, and I know you love your midfielders, perhaps just a word on why he is expected to be in the, the top three, maybe, if not win it. I would love to, one player win this award for the players means a lot, so I would love it. So, but I think, as I said many times, just being in contention or being there means that the club, and individually and collectively, have done a good season, so but there are a lot, a lot of good teams with a good players as well. So hopefully it's happened, but it's not in my hands. We we know the strikers often win, but given Rodri's run of unbeaten games, how important he was to Manchester City, is it maybe time now that a midfielder wins it this time round? It would be the light. He deserve it, but I guess maybe another one deserve it too. So the people both. So Rodri had made not just this season, many, many seasons. And the, the previous season, of course, was really, really good with the Premier League and especially in the Euros, winning with uh, with Spain. But there are players also, they, they did a good season. Uh, Pep, um, obviously the, the transfer window has been difficult for lots of different clubs for different reasons. I know with Julian Alvarez leaving, you spoke a couple of weeks ago about looking for a player at some point to come in and, and fill that and maybe challenge Erling um, up front. With this window specifically, was it just a case of the fact the right player wasn't available? Was it a case of the club needing more time because the Alvarez deal happened late? I mean, where, what's the situation with that? Um, I'm happy with the squad. So we didn't expect because we didn't expect Julian was leaving. Well, I didn't expect, I don't know, because he had conversations for a long time ago with other clubs, his agent, so could happen, but at the end, always you think maybe it's going to stay, but that didn't happen. And after we, yeah, we saw, but we have, of course, you have many, many injuries will be a problem, but hopefully 
you know, in two, three months, it's back Oscar and Phil is in that position and, and Makati can play in that position, Gundogan can play in that position, Bernardo can play in that position, a different type of players like Erling, of course. So, and maybe it's a mistake, I don't know, but I like to, to work with not a long, long, long squad. I don't like to leave a lot of players without playing for a long, long time. And when you have a long squad and no injuries, start a month without playing and I don't like it. And also I feel when everybody's involved and with the chance to play, the, the performance of the team is always better. So, and that's why I prefer, I know the group, I know how incredible, serious and professional they are and commitment in every single game and well, we decide to go. We, you're right, when we are not pretty, pretty, pretty sure, it's better wait. In winter we have, just in case happen, we have another chance, so if I'm not convinced and Chick is not convinced, it's better don't, don't take that, that step. We saw the England squad announced yesterday. Um, first, I guess, a word on Rico Lewis and Jack Grealish getting themselves back in the squad. I mean, Rico's had a fantastic pre-season and fantastic start to the season. You must be delighted to see him recognised by England. Absolutely. He deserved it for him. I'm so happy for him. Yeah, really, really happy. But Kyle Walker, I suppose, one of the big names not to be selected. Um, have you spoken to him? Do you know what? No. But when he will be back, his best. It will be soon. And always is a incredible weapon for the national team to be used because having specific qualities that is really, really we need. So, but of course it was late, and after um, still arrived with some some little niggles and problems. And and Rico was playing really good because the precision, the rhythm is higher than them because it was in holidays, and that's why that's why uh, it's in the position. But you know, <laughs> also there are many, many games in national team as well, and. And with his physicality, if he still is, his desire is going there, he has a chance to come back. It just performed well to play here, and the Open for national team will be open. Because Kyle obviously has that seniority, lots of experience, but this season is Rico pushing him as close as he ever has done in terms of for that place. Oh, it's team. a different type of player. So what, what, what Rico gives to the team, Kyle cannot give us, and what Kyle gives us to us, Rico cannot do it. So, but that, that is what about. It's not... Long, long, big squad, but everyone push each other, you know, to in position. That is the only way. Hi, Pep. Um, about your future, I, I appreciate it must be tiring to receive those questions regularly, but just to try to understand your rationale uh, on either deciding to stay or to, or to go. Does it, does it come from within, you think, this decision, or you're waiting to see the, the body language of the squad throughout the next months? I, an, I answered this question the first days, and it's over. <laughs> 